August the 1st, 2023 brings us in touch with a full moon in the sign of Aquarius. And this full moon is pretty darn amazing because it's really tightly connected to an asteroid for grace, healing, magic, and miracles. Her name is Chericlo. But at the same time, this moon does square Jupiter as well as the asteroid Wuhan, which will bring some of those Wuhan lab leak stories probably into the popular uh, media during the time of this lunation and the two weeks that follow. This moon is also strongly connected to reflecting the light of two powerful stars that are sitting with the sun at the time of the full moon. We'll be talking about how those stars, how this grace and energy of healing, compassion, magic, and miracles may play out for you over the course of the next two to three weeks after the full moon of August the 1st. So get ready, um, get ready to listen to your sun and moon sign, but most accurate will always be your rising sign. So please, if you don't know your rising sign and you do know your birth time, if you look at my description box below, I have a free video tutorial on how to cast your chart using free online software, find your rising sign, but also to find your whole sign house system version of your sky. If you're new to my channel, my name is Lori Lothi and I am using the Western Tropical Zodiac. This is not sidereal astrology. I'm also using whole sign house systems. I love the minor asteroids, which is why we'll be talking about them today. And I'm also quite fond of the stars, which we'll be talking about as well as the planets. Also, if you're new to my channel, check my description box for everything I do. My sky reader class will be coming up. There's a wait list. Doors will open. Uh, class will begin in mid-September. You might want to learn how to be your own astrologer, time your best life. If that appeals to you, check below. Um, during the month of August, I'm sharing my absolute delight with the Aura app. It's one of my favorite places to go after a long day of work to download download uh, to listen to, I should say, hypnosis, meditation, sound baths, and more. Um, so if that kind of thing is your cup of tea and you want to give it a free trial, seven days, they're an award winner. They got millions of people now using the app around the world. And there are teachers and guides and coaches you can actually go on live calls with as well. And all of that is for a seven day free trial using my link below and it's in the description box. And with that link, you also get 25% off should you decide to move beyond your seven day free trial. So I do love the app. I I'm sharing it from a place of authentic enjoyment of it. And if it's, up, if it's your cup of tea, check it out. Okay, let's get going and talk next about the sky. Whoa. Okay, so I like this moon, but I'm also recognizing the difficulty in this moon. Um, squaring Jupiter can oft, often be a, a, like a, an expansion energy that's c coming up against some kind of grit. And Jupiter in this square from Taurus, because this moon is happening at nine degrees of the sign of Aquarius, the sun is at nine degrees of the sign of Leo, and Jupiter is sitting in a square relationship to that. I'll show you the sky right now so you see what I mean, but that square is tension. It is not an easy thing to, you know, resolve necessarily. Now, Jupiter is sitting in the sign that belongs to Venus. That is her Taurus kingdom. Well, she is retrograding in Leo. There's something about that, that Venus is kind of like, hmm, backpedaling through the Leonine sky, where the sun is sitting and at the same time Jupiter in her kingdom is squaring off to the moon. Um, let me show it to you and then we'll dive into it. I want to talk about this asteroid as well. Now if you don't like mundane astrology, we're that means I'm talking about world events or world situations and you can always jump ahead to your rising sun and moon but I really suggest you stick around because you're going to learn a bit about the sky. You're going to a little bit learn more. I'm not going to repeat this material for each rising sun and moon sign so if you stick around you'll you'll learn something basically. Um, this is a full moon. This means that a full moon is kind of taking cue from when we had a new moon right back in the day and that new moon was in Aquarius on January the 21st 2023. What new things were we seeding in each of our lives and what, what things was the world experiencing around that January 21st moon add two weeks. Oh my goodness. I apologize for the noise. I think it's garbage day here or construction crew out there. Hmm. And my window is closed so I can't make it any quieter. Anyway, um, if you go back to your own life, uh, January 21st, add a couple of weeks, uh, what were you planting? What seeds were new in the Aquarius whole sign house of your sky? And then now it's coming to fruition. Now let's talk about this for the world for a second, okay? I'm going to pause by, I'm coming right back, but I'm pausing to close another window. 
So I'm going back to the picture to show it to you. I think I closed all the windows and I want to talk about this big picture uh, story about the Wuhan situation. Now, I'm not, you know, telling you how, what I think about anything. I'm just reading the sky, okay? But back uh, January 21st, we had that new moon and usually within like the month that follows any kind of new moon, anything that breaks in the new cycle will be related to the full moon later on. Usually, not always, but it happens to often occur that way. So it was back in like uh, February of 2020 23, you know, within the month after the, roughly the month after the new moon in January in Aquarius, Aquarius stands for the people of uh, sometimes regulations and rules for society, etc. But nonetheless, there was this lab leak report that the uh, US Department of Energy and or the Wall Street Journal I don't know, reported on or leaked that the US Department of Energy concluded that a lab leak was the most likely the source of the COVID virus. The Wuhan lab leak theory was getting credence at that time. And there was a big kerfuffle through all the headlines of February 2023 about this matter. So now we can ask ourselves a question. What is the asteroid Wuhan right here? six degrees and 24 minutes of Scorpio on this full moon in Aquarius in a really tight square to the moon and a square to the sun doing here. All righty, what's it there for? And in a broad opposition to Jupiter, creating actually a broad grand cross in the sky. Well, a couple of thoughts. Jupiter rules justice and truth. And Wuhan is opposite the justice and truth god uranus the god of shock and awe okay justice truth shock and awe opposition moon lighting up the sky full in the sign of aquarius next to by the way hygia the sign for the medical system doctors nurses medicine medical procedures but also health and healing and also chericlo chericlo is going to be wonderful for healing something collectively and individually she's the wife of chiron the centaur healer she brings uh, unconditional love forgiveness compassion miracles and magic in fact she is the only asteroid body uh, to have rings around her she's quite large and she was only discovered in 1997 when she was was discovered the sky was forming a six-pointed star which is its own magical you know inception point for the discovery of Chariclo who is between um Saturn and Uranus that's where she's circling through our sky so um a lot of people um love this asteroid I'm new to her or this celestial body I think she may be a dwarf planet but a lot of people are into her I'm just beginning to get into her I was born with Chariclo on my ascendant so for some of you I want to say individually we'll have healing for the collective we may have a healing as the suspicion that most common sense people have that if you have a virology institute doing gain-of-function research on COVID viruses from bats in the place where the virus erupted and now we know the first uh, people to be sick were the actual lab workers that you know there's likely you know parsimonious here right Occam's razor is very likely that's what the answer is it's like there's a lab that doing research on experimental coronaviruses is a lot better than some kind of animal in a wet in a wet market which you could never find that was the cause of this virus so I'm going to say this and then we'll move on it's very possible there's something going on in the news cycle especially in the USA in particular obviously because US was uh, through Fauci and NIH funding that gain of function research uh, for that lab now I said this very same thing a year ago, and I got slammed on this channel for being a conspiracy theorist. You know, it's so funny what, what was one day's conspiracy is today's truth. It's usually the matter. But what I want to say about this is this is a big splashy shock and awe energy. I don't know what further revelations could possibly come up. But in the U.S. Sibley chart, which is the U.S. signing of Declaration of Independence Sky, we have a sad rising USA, which makes the Aquarius part of the sky for the United States the third house. The third house is usually things to do with the media uh, that is reporting about the government or the government announcements to the public or all such matters to do with media and announcements and governance and government. So there is a lot of intensity here in the sky at the time of this full moon add what a month maybe afterwards to see something percolating around the Wuhan story in the USA natal chart Wuhan is sitting in the house of secrets background deals and negotiations and things that can be hidden from view the 12th house and you know we want to wonder what could be hidden from view in that 12th house and Jupiter is sitting in the United States Sibley chart right now house of the um of the workers of the economy of the the labor force that's another narrative but there are some 
issues in the U.S. labor force and around the world, too, regarding the pandemic uh, outcomes. So we're not going to go there. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that now. OK, so let's move on to your story individually and talk about some of the themes here. There's a couple of stories going on all at once around this moon. I'm really excited. Um, I want to talk about what could this profound healing, I'm probably going to call the video a magical miracle healing moon or something, because Charicla was so close to that lunation and the moon is literally hugging her. You know, she was this unconditional love. Love. She could provide miracles and healing. She's a very magical being. I'm going to go to a site that I'm going to add. I love this particular lady's write up, an astrologer. The site is foreverconscious.com. She has a great write up on Characlow. And she's puts together quite a few keywords here. Um, she calls uh, Characlow a, a celestial body of grace, healing, compassion, pure and gentle energy, loving kindness that lives within us all. And she says, buried deep within our bones, we want to help others. We want to support and lift up others. Buried in each and every one of us, we want to make people's dreams come true. It's Cherico's energy that can awaken us to this. Now, I'm born with that on my ascendant. Um, she was considered in mythology to be a shapeshifter. She could change her form, morph into some other creature. She was also considered a shaman, and she worked really closely, by the way, with the asteroid Vesta, or Vestal Flame Energy, and the goddess of the hearth and fire, as well as she worked with Athena, the goddess goddess of wisdom, knowledge, protection, and strength. So she's got a lot of things. She was the wife of the of the uh, centaur Chiron, who is also known to be the mentor of healers and heroes in the ancient tradition. So some people say that Characlo is the divine feminine healing, whereas uh, the centaur Chiron is a divine masculine force of healing. Whether that's true or not, that's just an interesting thought. Um, so she, she also can conjure the energies of spirits, She's wiser and more powerful than we are, and she can help us go venturing forth into the realm of the unseen. So foreverconsciousness.com's wonderful write-up on this asteroid will be appended in my description box. So um, my feeling here is that there's more good than bad, more optimism and goodness than not from the Characlo piece of the story. Now, also, the moon is in a sextile to an asteroid about homecoming. Where's your true home? This is migratory birds flying home. Lele, 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 alo, kuhoana. I can never say the Hawaiian name. I'm not going to try. But this asteroid at 12 degrees, conjunct Chiron the healer, right? The wife of Characlo is in a sextile to the lunation and a trine to the sun, making a wedge formation. Again, where are we yearning to come home to? I'll talk about in the all signs. That's also profoundly healing and opens us up to some grace and magic and miracles in our lives. Sometimes just telling the truth provides a healing, even if we don't want to hear that truth and that Jupiter goddess of truth God of truth and wisdom, knowledge and guru dispelling the darkness with Uranus, a little shock and awe. It could truth tell in the lunation aftermath in the two weeks that follow or even the month that follows. And remember, take it back to what were you seeding in January? So it can be harsh to hear truth, but truth can be healing. And ultimately, because Jupiter's opposite Wuhan, we do have a grand cross. And those are big energies of make or break energy, kind of catastrophically intense for the collective about what is this truth that can be revealed. Now, there are other things that could be happening in the sky. I mean, Jupiter, Uranus, and Taurus can be about shocks to the markets, stock markets, currency markets, and things to do maybe with also um, the land, like earthquakes. And this lunation could compel, compel a tragic earthquake event, for example. Okay? It just could, because then the moon, the moon herself, is saying, but we bring grace and healing and goodness through, like, the what, the heroic acts of helping those who were har harmed or, whoops, I mean, small mode harmed or, you know, came into difficulty with this lunation, you know, like who, you know, survivors and heroic stories and tales of helping those in difficulty can be some of what may occur with this lunation. Okay, lastly, um, as a general thought, you know, the moon is in what we call the Egyptian term or the bound, the bound of Venus, which is a benefic planet. And at the same time, we also have Jupiter in Taurus, the Venus's sign. We have a lot of Venus energy going on in the sky, and yet she is retrograde. So when she's retrograde, she's close to Earth, and that's good. We really feel her. She is still visible in the sky. She's at 26 degrees of Leo, and the sun is at 9, so we can actually see her in the sky just barely see her in the sky still at this point, okay? And she will be seen in the evening sky as a evening star. But 
she's visible. That's what I'm saying. And she's retrograding. She's going back over old ground and the moon is reflecting the sun, Leo sun, where this is old ground that Venus has traveled since June the 5th. So there's a sense here that this moon is reflecting the light of stories that happened since June the 5th, in which Venus has been traveling through your Leo sky and telling some kind of narrative as well. The two stars that sit on the sun are Acellus Australis and Acellus Borealis. Those stars are flanking that sun at nine degrees of Leo, and the moon is reflecting the light of not just our solar system sun, but energetically these fixed stars. So Acellus Australis is strong assertion and strong will, and the Acellus Borealis is considered an erotic star, desire-driven, but can also express creativity widely, and one has to avoid extremes, going to extremes. But nonetheless, we have an energy of desire and drive and eroticism that the moon is also reflecting. I find that fascinating for our individual stories, maybe healing our desires, healing our drives, healing our creativity as the moon is with Cheriklo and Hygieia. And now I'm going to do the all signs. Don't forget to listen for your rising. It will be the most accurate. As I get ready to do that, I'm going to grab some kombucha before we get started, and then we'll get going. I almost forgot to mention something. I like the Sabian symbols now and then. I just thought I'd share this with you. A popularity that are, that proves ephemeral. A popularity that doesn't last, basically. Fleeting fame, fleeting popularity. It makes me think of the Andy Warhol 15 minutes. That's what the moon is on. It's a nine degree moon, but you round up in a Sabian to 10 degrees. So keep, keep that in mind. There also could be a flashing popularity news story, but it also could be something in our own lives where we have kind of a, a flare of ease around popularity but it may not be something that lasts so um it's like viral hits don't last right you get a whoosh and then then nothing else happens after that so i'm gonna go now and i'm gonna straight go straight into the all signs this is not a long video so uh keep with my pace if i'm talking a bit fast for you don't worry you can always play me back slowly as well on the playback speed um if you're in the live premiere and you're watching with me please hit my like button and help the channel grow um give me a good two thumbs up as we get through this together and uh, i always remind you guys check my description box you know for everything that's there so let's do all signs and i'm gonna kind of riff what grabs me the most, you know, for every sign, I'll, I'll kind of like focus on a little bit different, something a little bit different. So starting with Aries, sun, moon, but most accurate rising sign. As you can see, you have this kind of migra- migratory bird here, you know, the Lele Lucolo Leona, excuse my language, who can pronounce it? Let's just say the asteroid for yearning for your true home, wanting to land and find your true home and Chiron the healer in the north node of course this is all happening in the house of your identity and so this is an energy of having to strive to reach for you know a true home to heal one's identity and sense of self that's ongoing during this time of the lunation and you can see that the moon is coming into a sextile to you flowing from the 11th house of good spirit now good spirit is a lucky house it can bring lots of great financial gain from your career path it can bring you influence and um, it can also bring you favors from people in power especially friendships like acting like the older brother sister energy or even literally an older brother sister could really support you in a flowing way from this lunation but also remember we've got that magical miracle healing thing going on what did you plant back in january of 2020 uh, January February of 2023 that is coming into a fullness now now full moons can be about completions but it can also be about the fullness of the the ripening of something in your life and it may be your ripening in your um, social groups your clubs you belong to you're coming to a fullness in a friendship or an alliance or a full light is shining in the house of great gains from your career now sometimes you can get windfalls here like a little pennies from heaven anyone and that's always a nice little touch uh, magic miracles healing unconditional love compassion and forgiveness some of you might come to a completion with a relationship with a friend but there's a lot of compassion and forgiveness in the ending uh, or and a healing coming through from a completion with a friendship possibly with this placement of the moon up here at the top of the sky you may also experience a revisioning an ending of old goals wishes and dreams for your life and a need to refine and redefine what it is you strive to create in this life pluto's finishing up your 10th house transit from 2008 It'll be there for another year or so on and off but the gist is you know you've really been transformed in terms of purpose and career over the last 
multiple years, 14 years, and this is also, you know, connected to the 11th house. The gains of the 11th, right, are coming from the 10th. Like you make that money, you get that reputation. Now, fl fleeting fame, remember that one, that kind of it doesn't last. You may have a pop here, a big full moon in the house, 11th house can bring a bit of popularity appeal, a bit of fleeting fame, shining brightly in the Aquarian sky for you. With a square to Jupiter, you may be dealing with some tension with a sibling, elder sibling, or we, a friend or somebody uh, to do with resources, finances, and money because of Jupiter square, the moon, and the sun. Yet at the same time, Venus is the goddess of luck, and she's in your fifth house of money luck, and therefore this can also look like winning money. Literally, you could be winning money. The square to Jupiter isn't always bad. It requires action, and it's exciting, exhilarating energy as well. Squares are action-oriented decision-oriented uh, entities. Um, you also could find that this may look like something to do with one of your children, right? The lunation is reflecting the house of children and romance and lovers and some kind of uh, big energy to Jupiter squaring the whole darn thing, like uh, to do with money, to do with uh, voice, vocation, uh, earnings and possessions. Anything else I'd say about it? Mm, that square to Jupiter could end up being something like also, are you willing to uh, speak truthfully, right? It's a house of speech about something that needs to be said to a child or to a friend or to a lover and that let that truth speak happen on August the 1st, add two weeks, boldly speak your truth basically with your beautiful voice. Your voice is beautiful now, Aries, because Jupiter's moving through the house of speech. All right, moving on. All right, Taurus, maybe go back to January of 23 and then into February. What new things were you seeding and planting as a Taurus sun moon rising in the house of your visible reputation, in the house of your visible career, ambition, success, and drive for purpose, the 10th house. So you were planting seeds back in the day and now they're coming to fullness. Sometimes that means completion. Sometimes it just means things are really shining brightly up there. And there's been or is a healing to your reputation, some kind of grace and forgiveness around your reputation, around your status in the world, or around your career and ambition and success. Because this is also a lunation that is connected to this homecoming yearning, there may be a desire to return to a foreign shore, maybe just to travel and really connect to that foreign country, that's the far off foreign shores of the 12, but you also may be wanting to return to some deep connection to your soul and to your spiritual path. And there's a yearning to find a healing and a guide and a mentor even to take you closer to divine inspiration through a spiritual philosophy or a guru or a guide, something like that, in the couple of weeks that follow this moon. I do think that with Venus moving through your fourth house retrograde, you're making changes with property, land, home, and real estate, and she's co-present with the sun that's reflecting all that erotic desire and drive and creativity of the, of the stars on the sun in the 10th house, maybe being way more creative and passionate about what it is you're creating can bring you a flash of popularity, uh, ephemeral popularity and appeal with that energy of the moon on the Sabian symbol of, of that um, flash in the pan popularity. I kind of also would think that that square to Jupiter with Uranus, a little shock and awe, sudden unexpected developments, you're feeling pretty magnanimous. You're feeling pretty good. Your optimism and faith in life are improving. Starting in this, this optimistic faith energy began to occur in the month of May as Jupiter entered here, uh, middle of May into your first house and will be here till the third week of May next year. Uh, depending on the degree of your ascendant, you know, as a Taurus rising or sun and moon, you'll feel it sooner or you know later. Like my daughter is a Taurus sun and she just got a raise or a promotion at work as Jupiter's crossing over her sun. You know what I'm saying? Sun could be your purpose. Moon could be your home. But descendant people is your whole life. But this is a lovely time. So Jupiter is making you lucky too. You're lucky. So you can have some career luck or you can have some luck regarding home and real estate. For example, during this time of this full moon. Technically, I'd say that you also will have to make some exciting but sudden decisions around property, land, home, real estate, career, purpose, and the domestic situation. With Venus retrograding in the fourth house, some of you may also have a female from your past coming to visit you in the mm, two to three weeks after the full moon. And this may provide some profound healing for you if that is true because of that Chericlo 
and that Hygieia energy at the top of the sky. Lastly, um, you are lucky now. You have a lot of power with Jupiter moving through your first house. Yes, there will be surprises, but you're seeking freedom. You're seeking to be original. You're trying to color outside your own lines uh, with that Uranus story that started in 2019. So, you know, a lot of times you see Uranus and Jupiter together. It's a fight for truth. It's a freedom fighter. It's, you know, literally like freedom truth together. So, you know, look to that kind of idea of being freed by the truth. You are freed by the truth, whatever the truth is that occurs to you and becomes visible, especially truth around purpose, reputation, career, and a healing in those areas of your reality. All right, Gemini, sun, moon, and especially rising sign. In your sky, what you've got happening here is you're looking at a beautiful, big, full Aquarius moon at nine degrees of the sign of Aquarius at the time of the lunation, which is August 1st. My chart's progressed to August 2nd. Just ignore that. Um, we also see that Characlo, this magical, compassionate, forgiving, unconditional, loving being, Characlo, wife of Chiron, is with that lunation. So you may be looking to heal something to do with faith with your spiritual philosophy, with a legal matter, court case, to do with also third marriages, uh, or also your ninth house could be about academic environments as well as travel. And there can be some openings, uh, go back to January of 2023 into February when that new moon was bringing into your awareness the seeds that you were going to plant in January in the house of a third marriage, you know? Now I have a progressed son in Gemini. So if I was to use this for myself, I began a new relationship in January that looks like and feels like a third marriage. So now there's this beautiful full light up here with a lot of grace, compassion, healing, and beauty. But also at the same time, we see that there's this homecoming yearning uh, asteroid with Chiron that's flowing to this moon from the 11th house of good spirit. This is going to be even some kind of beautiful flow from uh, a friend, from greater gains from your career, some kind of be beautiful flow in the two weeks that follow from a revision of some dreams and wishes that are in alignment with your Dharma. You can use the ninth house and say Dharma in one sentence. It's what's your real alignment with your purpose here in life. So some of you Geminis are looking for that alignment with purpose to heal something in your story and to move your dreams and wishes to escalate them, all right? Escalate them, drive towards greater dreams and wishes, goals, and, and money, earnings over the next two years, all, all about with the North Node here. But first you're trying to home in, hone in, align with something that's worth your energy. The square to Jupiter in the 12th. Jupiter rules foreign lands, far off shores. I mean, he rules travel and he can be about foreigners, children, wealth and prosperity. But here in the 12th house, this is a house of foreign shores. And, in, and also interestingly, revenue generated from foreign lands or commerce and revenue from foreigners, etc. So a couple of thoughts. One, you could be looking to increase your revenue from foreign foreign lands and foreign shores, clients, customers. And this is a, some tension, but it can bring some um, decisive action and choices at the same time about how to increase those revenues. On the other hand, there can be the indication of journeys or travel to foreign countries, especially with the moon in the ninth and Jupiter in the 12th, that this full moon is trying to bring your attention to. You don't necessarily travel on the day of the moon to another country. This is something that you're going to be aware of starting in January and now it's coming to fruition. And it may be planning a journey to a foreign country, for example, sometime in the month of August. With Venus in your third house retrograding, you may also be traveling to see somebody you've known before, a sibling, a cousin, and you also may be enjoying travel, but going back to somewhere you've been before as a Gemini rising. And it could even look like, therefore, some support or some energy from a sibling, Sun Venus in the third house of siblings, that really lines up some kind of opening for you uh, to do travel to a foreign shore, foreign land, or foreign country. You have siblings all over this one, by the way. Uh, elder sibling or just siblings in general are very involved in the energy of this full moon for you. And things to do with your siblings may play a big role over the two and a half to three weeks that follow this moon. Alrighty, so good luck with that. Let me know what happens. Um, 
I'll, I'll let you know how it happens for me <laughs> as a progressed sun in Gemini. Okay, uh, you are now looking at Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising. If you are a Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Rising sign, especially Rising, the lunation is taking cue from the January new moon in the sign of Aquarius. Now we have the full moon bringing this to completion or fullness in your chunky money house. This is money you share up here, eighth house money or resources with a spouse or business partner, maybe inheritance monies, a stock monies, chunky money, tax monies, rebates, insurance payouts, those kinds of things. So this kind of source of money, even royalty income over here is being focused on. What ways were you looking at those kind of collaborative financial ventures back in January into February, and now there's a full light here, but you're bringing grace, healing, compassion, and miracles with Chericlo, and of course, Hygieia up at the part of the sky. And then across the way, there is Venus there in your money house. Now you're going backwards here. She's pausing, going backwards. She's close to earth, maybe having you reassess your earning strategy, maybe even slowing down your money flow as you are not earning as much as you normally do. She's retrograding, asking you to go back and find your voice, even change your food style, by the way. But anyway, mostly find your true vocation, calling and voice in which you enjoy the work you're doing to earn money. And the sun is suggesting something similar, shining your soul light in the energy of finances and money making. This is all about the money story for a lot of you cancer rising. Now, Venus can go back and help you assess your desires and values around money. And the sun is sitting with that star of creativity and drive and assertion and strong will two stars there. So a lot of this looks like for you guys as Cancer Rising, there's something going on around the whole axis of money and you're really rethinking it, even shared monies with a spouse. For some of you could also be looking at sharing resources because you're having a divorce. I mean, Pluto's at the tail end of your seventh house and you're going through separation conversations and disagreements or agreements and Venus is trying to help you pull back the bow, go deeper, deeper, deeper into your values and what you really feel and what you really see uh, the, the role of money and resources in your life to be authentically, right? Um, when she was going direct, you might have spent more than you, you normally do, right? Venus loves her luxuries and now she's retrograding. She's pulling back on spending. So something with the lunation could also say you're going to start pulling back on spending and be a little more austere over the weeks that follow this full moon and how you spend money. Squaring Jupiter. Okay, well, and then flowing to the asteroid of homecoming and migratory birds. You want a homecoming to a truer calling, a truer purpose, Chiron North Node. A lot of you will expand your reputation and career quite dramatically over the next two years, maybe become workaholics, be careful as the North Node moves through your 10th house. But in this lunation and the couple of two, three, two to three weeks of follow, you're looking for a connection to that deepest yearning of who you are, what you really wish to be expressing in your purpose and career that is also financially successful. And lastly, Jupiter squaring this with Uranus, little shock and awe from an elder sibling that impacts your finances, from a friend or an ally that impacts your finances, a little shock and awe maybe from a um, a group of belonging, or even a shock and awe bolt of great gains that you wish to experience coming through the sky in the couple of weeks that follow, but requires you to take bold and dramatic action or make bold and dramatic decisions. Certainly Jupiter here can act like a fairy godfather, fairy godmother, and bring you a little bit of a windfall. But again, it would come through 11th house placements, either a breakthrough in your career, raise or promotion, or something through a friend or sibling, especially elder sibling, benefiting you in your financial area in the two weeks that follow this moon. Good luck with that. Okay, let's talk about this for Leo, sun, moon, and rising. If you're a Leo, the energy of this lunation is all about your relationship. This is a full moon in the house of marriage. Go back to January, February from that new moon, you're planting seeds and business partners, uh, clients, audiences and also your marriage or really significant committed relationships. So sometimes full moons can be completions. Maybe a relationship is going to be coming to an end as a result of this moon. But on the other hand, maybe you're also coming to a fullness or a completion energy regarding something you're doing in the world that revolves around audience, clients, and marketplace. Maybe you're going to make a change in the way you approach that part of your life. There is healing here. There's Chariclo, grace, compassion, forgiveness, and Hygieia, even more of that energy of healing. You may be healing a significant relationship in the two weeks that follow this moon. You also want to 
uh, to come home to some deepest wisdom and truth, soulful spiritual wisdom and truth because of this asteroid for migratory birds seeking their home, sitting up at the ninth house placement, sextiling the moon. You could also heal a relationship because of trips and travel to foreign lands or a healing legal contract and agreement finally coming to pass in some area of your life. Jupiter is squaring the lunation. Jupiter is bringing goodness always, but he's also in a gritty tension angle to this moon from your house of career and reputation. While Venus is sitting with the sun opposite the moon. Venus going retrograde, you're rethinking your values, you're rethinking about what you believe about yourself and about life. You're going back, back, back to revise stuff about your identity, your self-love, your self-worth. And all of a sudden this kind of Jupiter square, the sun moon energy kicks off a storm here in the two weeks that follow the moon, maybe a deeper dive, but a radical reassessment of your self worth, a magical healing of your sense of lovability and your capability to be persuasive and charismatic. Jupiter at the top of the sky, though, with Uranus could be an unexpected change in your work, an unexpected change in your career path, but it brings a, a lot of goodness to your seventh house. So it's really good for your audience marketplace energies, but it might be very dramatic. Um, finally, you may have opportunities at work and there may be some consequences that are, you know, difficult for your marriage partner. You know, your marriage partner may be going through something because of your opportune energy coming through the top of the sky, certainly with Jupiter <laughs> trining Mars, which is another story that we're not really focused on. This is a glow up from, you know, 10th house to earnings house energies for Leo. So you're definitely picking up steam, making more money, getting more financially solid. And I don't know, maybe there's just this clash with a marriage type partner, a little bit of sky tension that you have to deal up in the couple of weeks that follow the full moon. Are you in the live premiere and you haven't hit my like button? Please consider hitting my like button. It will help my channel grow. I'm going to take a quick break and be right back. Okay, guys, I just had a little bit of a snack rather than eating on the microphone, God forbid. And we're going to go ahead and continue the recording. Mm -hmm. We're moving into the share screen button. And don't forget to hit the like button and the bell for notifications. And you guys know the drill. Here we go. We're on to Virgo. Now, if you're a Virgo moon, sun, but most accurate rising sign, most likely accurate rising sign, you're going to experience this new moon, full moon in Aquarius on that healing asteroid Chericlo and grace and magic and all of that in a house of sickness and health. The sixth house. Now, this is a place where often we encounter challenges to our health. It's a Dastana house in India. It is often considered a difficult house. It's called the Gates of Hades and Hellenistic astrology. But it's also where we do service to the world. It's how we can eliminate our karmic uh, scorecard and make it all nice and clean by being of greater service. And often it looks like our work life, you know, colleagues, coworkers, employer, employee things, the job, because we're of service in that thing called our work. Now, of course, work can be servitude and drudgery, or it can be service, but we all get one version of or the other of the thing called the work. So the workhouse, the health house, the six house is where this full moon is shining. And there's a healing here. You may have a healing regarding a physical health element. You cannot avoid that with magical Chericlo and, and Hygieia. It's like a beautiful glow up around health. Second of all, it can also be an op opportunity to really shine brightly in a workspace or to complete something. Some of you may end a job, may walk away or end something. You might go back to January, uh, January 21st at about two or three weeks. What was going on in the workhouse for you or the health, ho health house that's coming to full completion or endings so the end of a health challenge at a magical healing a grace-filled healing you might be yearning to come home to the asteroid lily yada yada the migratory birds up here and find healing also in your greater financial story this has to do with your investments your inheritances and the money you share with those in your life like a spouse or a business partner and this part of your chart is looking for some sort of yearning to return to a place of wholeness and come home to some healing in your money story now of course if you're going to leave a job maybe that helps you heal your money story because you're underpaid or maybe the pay that you get isn't worth the job you're doing or the work you're doing and that is also going to increase your sense of worth because you are no longer struggling with that, you know, underpaid, underloved place of work or something like that. 
sometimes pets can be the sixth house and therefore you may have some extraordinary healing of an ailing pet or for example or a completion of a pet story and sometimes getting a tenancy or rental agreement uh in play one way or the other as a landlord or a leasee can be in play from this full moon as well a renewed lease a completion of a lease a decide, decision to end a lease but go back to january what was going on january february and those areas of your life the new moon back then is now full in your aquarius sixth house because you can also eliminate debt uh, and have debts karmic and real and sixth house and eighth house can involve financial debt some of you may be coming to an ending of a debt situation to complete a debt to pay off a debt something like that or have a debt paid down or have someone who owes you money return money to you are all possible now the full moon is in an opposition to of course the sun venus over here in leo and this is your uh, self and doing house well it's like your addictions your bad habits the way you might um, undermine your own life self-sabotage even so you may have some experience here of um, working through something to do with the end of those patterns especially with venus retrograde she's trying to pull back on pleasures here these are all kinds of pleasures that could undo us but this is also known as the house of bed pleasures uh, are you having less bed pleasures for your better health maybe but venus re retrograding here could also say you're pulling back on addictive pleasures and you're trying to rein them in and get a handle on them and this full moon is helping you improve the health as a result um hospitals is the 12th house venus is there she's a woman she's retrograde a female from your past in a hospital situation is a possibility here but it would connect in some way to a full light in the house of your work and your and your debts, you know, and also there is the inheritance house activated with Chiron. So maybe there is a possibility of an ailing female bequeathing you some money, just a real outlier for some of you Virgo sun, moon and rising. With the energy of your uh, Jupiter square energy from the ninth house, this is academia. Uh, this is foreign travel and foreign lands and third marriages in one of the house systems I use for Vedic astrology, the ninth is a third marriage house. So you may be having some kind of opportunity and some kind of wealth and some kind of excitement with academics, foreign lands, foreign travel, court and legal matters even, but also in third marriages, book publishing for some of you, but also there's a, there's a square. So we have to deal up some kind of intense energy between houses 12, six and nine. All of these are metacosmos between the world's houses and the ancient tradition so there's also the potential for spirituality and spiritual attainment or belief to be on the game board for you maybe you're going to have to come to terms with something with the spiritual philosophy of life or a teacher a professor or a spiritual leader guru in your life and you're coming kind of come home what is that like a come to jesus moment regarding the deeper meaning of your life even as it connects to the work you're here to do in the world and the health you wish to experience in your life as well for my daughter who's a virgo rising uh, going back to school she might be selecting courses in the time following this lunation for her next semester at university maybe there's going to be some tension there as she tries to choose the right courses and that with uranus everything is unexpected who knows i don't know like who knows what could be going on but if you're traveling to foreign lands as, as a virgo and you've got a square with uranus to this full moon an example could be you think you're going to travel to foreign land but there's an ailing pet or there's an ailing person in a hospital setting and that is going to derail your travel plans for example an ailing female in a hospital a pet it's not doing well physically who knows and you may change your travel plans those are just examples look to the two weeks that follow this moon also look to late January into mid February or late February last year to what was going on there as well, because that was the beginning of something that's full, coming to fullness now. Libra sun moon and rising sign. This is a full moon that takes cue from the new moon of January 21st 2023 the full moon in your fifth house of children romance entrepreneurship creativity projects talents skills and hobbies now the full moon here it brings completing fame in a house that can bring fame the fifth house can be the house of performers and can bring some fame so if that anything you're doing libra needs a, a splash of fame you might get it off of this lunation but it won't last you're trying to heal something in your sexuality in your romantic life you may also be trying to heal something to do with your entrepreneurial endeavors and your creative projects you're trying to come to some kind of grace forgiveness compassion and uh, miraculous and unconditional love here 
Yeah, the full moon, though, is opposite that Venus sun in the 11th house. A lot of your attention has been taken by the larger social groups of belonging, attention uh, to, from a, a sibling, maybe a ten, ten, attention going to um, really actualizing some great gains from your career. And that, that sun Venus combination is Venus pulling back a bit and maybe reassessing how hard you're working for those great career gains, perks, rewards, etc. cetera, um, money you're making. And she might be slowing you down, saying it's time to slow down the career gains, take a break for a bit. And the full moon is looking for joy. Why? Because the fifth house is excitement, joy, enthusiasm, and inspiration. It's a spark of your soul having its joy in this life. So you're looking for fullness and pleasure and joy and less so in hard work and career gains. And this full moon is bringing maybe some of that to, right to your face. Leisure travel and for pleasure can be a full moon in the fifth house. Some of you may be traveling for pleasure and enjoyment and pulling away from the hard work that you've been doing for some reason, like time to take a break there's energy here though you've got drive and you've got strong will and you've got creative expression and desire on that star studded solar energy in the 11th this could be also a push pull between your desire for a break pleasure and fun versus great gain attainment in your work environment you know so there's like this push and pull going on jupiter is trying to break the tension from the well, he's squaring it, so he can be like an outpicturing of a tension point. In the house of chunky money, or money you share with a partner in business or love, or money from inheritances. And so because the moon is in a money house, money, luck, and speculation, and there's also money to be had in the 11th from your career, and Jupiter's in a money house as well, this could be a big money energy going on for you as well in the couple of weeks that follow this. A big chunk of money can come from Jupiter, Uranus, that you didn't expect out of the blue and with Pluto in the fourth house of legacy, wealth and family of origin, again, maybe a, a money from a parent, money from somebody in your family line coming your way sometime in the month of August. You may not have expected it though, or an insurance payout or a tax rebate or a big royalty check, something big coming through in the two weeks that follow the moon. You're yearning to come home to something that's really true in primary love relationship as it applies to sexual intimacy and joyful sexual connection or romantic connection and committed love. That's that asteroid of the migratory bird and you're trying to heal something and you're spending a lot of time Libra healing your one on one significant love stories over the next year and a half with that north node in your seventh house and this is bringing that need for healing to light for you where are you wounded in the romantic love story committed love story think of that uh, sexual healing na na song you know it's kind of like got that vibe here and this moon over the you know couple of weeks even all month of august is going to bring your attention to that story to find a solution Scorpio, sun, moon, and especially rising sign. So Scorpio, the story is a moon full and bright and big with healing, magic, miracles, and compassion in the house of home and property, real estate and land, your domestic private life. It's completion. You may sell a home. It's completion. You may move from a home. Um, it's completion of something you're doing in the home and from the home. At the same time, you've planted a seed for this ending back in January with the new moon in the same part of your sky through to February. And now you're coming to a fullness here. Healing in the home, magic and miracles in and from the home or miraculous magical selling or buying of a home are all possible. At the same time, you know, this full moon is looking up at Venus sun over across the way in your 10th house. You've been doing well. You've been exceeding your expectations in your career, most likely even getting new jobs that were lucky. These are things that have been going on since June the 5th. Venus is now retrograding, backtracking and suggesting it's time to slow down. She's close to her. She's moving slow and she's saying, let's slow down. Let's not focus so much on your career. Let's focus more on what you're doing in and around and your home and property and real estate issues. And at the same time, the sun up there is giving you a a lot of focal point energy on your career but also it could be you know bosses and people in power that have been looking on you with favor but now you've got this lunation that's opposing that uh, and you might just need some downtime some private time some solitude and time away from the bright night light of the sky and some return to quiet times at home alone or with somebody you love you know also scorpio 
you do have this yearning for homecoming in the house of work and maybe some of you are really feeling a desire to move into an alignment with some kind of work that feels really true to your heart like you're coming home to what's true chiron north node over the next year and a half two years you're going to try to heal the work you do in the world to bring something really authentic and true and purposeful to your career and earnings path this lunation does square Jupiter and Uranus in your marriage house. It may have nothing to do with you. It could be a sudden, exciting, shocking, cool opportunity that your marriage partner is having that spices up the, 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 the two or the three weeks after this full moon. But at the same time, if you're trying to buy or sell a property, Jupiter brings you luck in finding a buyer, a legal deal, sudden, out of the blue, offers or to buy or sell land and property and real estate can really light the sky up for you. And certainly with, you know, this energy, you know, this is a good time for you to sell or buy something. I'm not afraid of this full moon here for you to do that. But, you know, look for Jupiter. There is some tension there, but there's also some protection. Mercury and Virgo trining Jupiter, you know, in your seventh house means that you will get a deal that is true, that the fine print is good. Just watch out for the retrograde period of Mercury. Um, I think it's August 23rd to September 15th. That will be dicey for buying and selling in terms of signing documents or just look at the fine print. But you do have a lot of blessings here with Mercury in the house of, of good spirit and Jupiter in the seventh uh, with this full moon to look at pot potentially putting a property up for sale, maybe even buying one if that's something you're looking to do. Moving on. Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising. What you have happening here is a big full moon in your third house of siblings and cousins, trips and travels to short distances, things to do with skills-based learning and education, like, you know, learn to change a tire, get a real estate license, you know, very practical education. It's also the house of siblings. Did I say that? Yep. Yeah. It can be your online world as well and your local neighborhood and your neighbors. So many meanings, right, to the third house. But you're full here. This is big completion energy as well. Maybe you're gonna complete something Sagittarius, leave a neighborhood, end a neighborhood, leave behind a neighborhood, um, have a fullness in something you were connecting to with a sibling and coming to completion. If you go back to January 21st, add a few weeks last last year, I mean this year, you know, January of this year behind us to like February, end of February even, you may find that you started in your third house matters, trips, travel, sibling, all those things again and now it's coming to a full harvesting time but it's very magical miraculous and healing for you if you're a writer this is the house of writing oh my god you may be finalizing a writing project at last now at the same time the full moon is reflecting the sun in the house of publications you may be publishing maybe getting an agent venus is up there going backwards maybe revising projects to do with publishing and writing venus is retrograding saying going back saying maybe bringing to your attention a former person that you've known in um in a publishing or foreign land international theme that's going to support you to bring something to completion in the area of online world writing and travel now, this is a travel axis, nine and three. So some of you Sagittarius are looking at a trip coming off of this moon in the two to three weeks that follow. More likely closer to home, honestly, like domestic travel. And that trip could bring you a romance if you are looking for love because the North Node Chiron and the asteroid for yearning for homecoming in the romance house can bring some single Sagittarius a romantic story with Venus retrograding in the house of the foreigner, maybe somebody from a different culture land or maybe somebody who's traveling to or you're traveling and you guys intersect. So for some of you, a very healing, lovely romance can emerge out of this energy of the full moon. Jupiter is squaring from the sixth house. Or you could travel to see a child or tra a child could travel to see you. I should have added that. It feels like a homecoming. Um, Jupiter is squaring from the sixth house of work and health, this moon. This could mean there's some conflict and tension between something you wish to accomplish in your work or your workspace or your job space that you're really on fire. You know, Jupiter's trotting Mars. Things are going well. You're really picking up steam, but there is something you need to do with a sibling 
or a cousin or a travel or, or a child. And it's really, there's a bit of tension, but there's opportunity to experience some blessings here in your health. Jupiter is going to be able to improve your health over the next year until the end of May next year. And the square from Jupiter to the full moon with Hygieia and Chericlo could actually look like a breakthrough in a health issue, but you might have, you might learn something new, unexpected, surprising. Your honest is there a little shocking, like, oh my God, I didn't know that I was sick because I'm allergic to gluten. Someone should have told me that along the way. So a, a shocking surprise of self-knowledge and understanding, wisdom, or learning that can improve your health in the couple of weeks that follow this lunation. All right, Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising sign, especially rising sign, most accurate full moon in the money house. Well, this is good for your finances. You're coming to some full completion and healing magic and miracles financially. This full moon on August 2nd will open up a gateway for a prosperity feeling for you. But on the other hand, you're also maybe healing something deeper to do with your vocation, your calling, your purpose, your work in life. With this lunation, you may also experience that the Venus retrograde in the eighth house can re, re, um, turn around your finances. You know, Venus um, could have diminished your financial story, and now she's going to go back and restore it as she retrogrades through your eighth house. And somehow your money feels like it's coming back to you, or money is coming back to you. Money from inheritances, money from legacy wealth, especially, um, even money coming from an elder sibling for some Capricorns. And the other thing about this is that Venus here is having you revision, revise, and rethink your longer term treasure chest strategies, you know, your investments, your state, your 401k, maybe your uh, an inheritance or family of origin monies or shared monies with a love partner. Because the moon is a ruler of your seventh house of business legal contracts, business associates, and, and marriage partners, some of this money may be about money, love, and luck. Uh, miracles and healing in connection to a significant business or love relationship. Energetically as well, there's a lot of, uh, of, of wanting to yearn to find your true home with this asteroid of the migratory birds, the North Node and Chiron here. A lot of Capricorns are yearning to find a sense of homecoming to where they live, to the land they're on, to where they really belong. And there's something about this moon that is going to say, okay, well, here's the resources you need the fullness and the completion of some financial stuff in order for you to find the true place of belonging, the home that is true for you. You're yearning to be it in that home. The North Node through the house of real estate, property and land anyway over the next 18 months is saying the same darn thing, expanding your home, aiming you for a home and also increasing your desire to find that home. As an Aquarius, I went through this last year and it was an amazing journey to find my really lovely home that I'm currently in now. So, Another thing I would mention here, Jupiter squaring this lunation from the house of children. That's because it's hitting your money axis. There's a possibility one of your children suddenly needs money from you or suddenly asks for money from you. This could also be a dating partner, romantic partner, money that they're wanting or asking of you. Um, yet on the other hand, Jupiter is a god of luck in a money luck house. This involves lotteries, bingo halls, gaming, casinos, and it could look like a sudden surprising excitement around money that you win that you win in some competitive game of chance or something like that. So for some Capricorns, there could be, you could be a little bit shocked and also rattled, but excited by the fact that there's some financial gain through luck, money, luck. Coming through your sky. Um, if you're an entrepreneur, this is also really good. Jupiter Uranus could kick your entrepreneurial stuff up in high gear. And this could look like a big lush up in your financial flow uh, as a result of some kind of entrepreneurial breakthrough or um, strengthening. Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising. Am I recording? OMG, I am. Thank God. Aquarius, sun, moon, and rising sign. What we've got going is a full moon in the house of you. Go back to January 21st at about four weeks because that was in the new moon was there. Now we have a full moon. So you started something new in your life in January, and now it's coming to fullness. I'm going to use me as an example. I will give you all your due time, guys, but I, I know myself the best. I started a new relationship 
in January. And that is literally what this is about. So there is a new beginning because I am a new person looking across at the significant love house and I'm having a new beginning in love or relationship in the month of January last year, this year. So look to what was going on January 20th, 21st, add, you know, three or four weeks, what was starting anew in your life in love relationship and maybe home and property and real estate. I also moved into a new place in January. You cannot make this stuff up. So what was going on in home, property, land, real estate and relationship stuff for you in January into February, because now it is coming to a fullness, a harvest, a ripening or whatever, a full light, but it's in the house of you. You got all of the cards in your hand. You're the one seeing things in a new light, the full bright light of the moon, but it's very beautiful, healing, magic, miracles, grace, compassion, and forgiveness of Chericlo and of also Hygieia here. So this is like a very good for your body, by the way. You can magically, miraculously heal your body as a result of this lunation. If anything is wrong with you, just do, you know, a good old, you know, um, petition for divine healing and you're likely to get it. The other thing here is that you see that you yearning for a homecoming in this part of your third house sky through travel through trips, maybe through the neighborhood, you want a better neighborhood, you want to, uh, you know, a lot of you or a writing project that want, you want to take ho yourself home through a project of writing, creating, communicating the online world, but the yearning to come home to truer purpose, Chiron, destiny, North Node is being activated by this full light and you're looking inward Aquarius, you're looking at yourself, the moon's in the house of you for the answers to do with that yearning for true authentic expression, communication, writing, online world, or even journeys and travel. And some of you change of neighborhood or something to do with finding your true neighborhood. There's a potential here as well with a square from Jupiter with Uranus from unexpected but exciting and exhilarating expansion or change of home. That's because Jupiter is making you every everybody here bigger and bigger and bigger in your home over the next year, a larger home, bigger home, more gracious home, more wealthy home, more prosperous home, more more prosperity from things you do in your home. And as an Aquarius, therefore, even though you know, you may not be anticipating it, there can be an exciting and sudden development around a new home that opens up for you after this moon. And because you have Mars trining from the eighth house of chunky money, some of you may have the opportunity to buy a home or sell a home or negotiate um, a new, well, it usually is like mortgages and stuff like that, Mercury, Mars in your eighth house uh, of that kind of money, uh, developments around property, land, home, and real estate over the month that follows the August 1st lunation. Lastly, Venus is retrograding in your seventh house, asking you to, if you're in a new relationship that began after June the 5th, Venus retrograding will actually call that relationship likely off. She's changing her mind. She's going back. If you began a relationship before June the 5th, then that relationship is likely going to deepen. Venus retrograde in the seventh house deepens the, the relationship, brings it to a greater strength of commitment by going back over old ground to, fer to sort of like fertilize, which she's very good at doing. She's a fertility goddess, to fertilize new depths or new enjoyment or new deeper love in a love relationship okay one that would have to pre-exist june 5th otherwise you might be finding that relationship turning off and this full moon could be you know the completion point last but not least remember i talked earlier about the sort of flash of fame the andy warhol um signature here ephemeral popularity of the Sabian symbol. Since it's in the house of you, it could simply mean you're going to have a flash of great popularity about who you are in the world sometime in August. It, don't expect it to last, you know, but it could be quite exciting for you. It could be like, woo, uh, with Venus in the seventh house, you could get a definite sense of being popular with the audience or some big appeal that suddenly strikes up really big energy in August. Already, take care. Wish you the best, fellow Aquarians. First and always first, sometimes last but not least, is the Pisces sun, moon, and rising sign. My soulmate James is a Pisces. Let's talk about that. So there is a full moon for the Pisceans of the world in their 12th house of foreigners, foreign lands, foreign shores, revenue generated through foreigners, foreign lands, and foreign shores. Also the house of spirituality, where we spiritually awaken all the way, nirvana, shunyata, 
full on moksha, Buddhahood, etc. Big light is here. Go back to January. What seeds did you plant in your house of enlightenment? Go back to January. What seeds were you trying to plant with revenue you could create by dealing with foreigners or people from foreign countries? Those are now coming to fullness, to ripeness, to harvesting and to completion. If you are somebody who is involved at all in things to do with hospitals, um, jails, or um, social services, this is also the same 12th house matters. And so you may be having a fullness here as well, like, you know, a fullness in those areas of concern in your life. Lunation is a moon. And Hygieia and Chericlo could mean a magical, miraculous, profound healing of a female, you know, in a hospital setting, but moon is usually mother, mother figures, not love partners. So if you have a mother, mother figure in a hospital setting, look for magical, miraculous healings following the this moon, let's just say the month of August. You may have an opportunity to travel for work to a foreign shore. That's because of the moon in the 12th house and the sun in the two stars of assertion, strong will, creativity, desire, and drive in your sixth house of work. So some of you could be opening up to an opportunity to travel uh, for work or because of some work situation opening up here. Venus is retrograding through the house of work, colleagues, co co-workers, employers, employees from past exhaust, past exhausted, past work situations can come back out of the woodwork after this moon to get you involved in some project or some offer or some opportunity that can involve the, for, the word foreigners. Funny, the asteroid Wuhan is up in the ninth house of foreign lands too. That's just fascinating. That could indicate some journeys to Asia for some people. Now, the next thing is that Lunation is asking you to come home to heal your money story. You have Chiron and the North Node in the house of your earnings and we have Chericlo, magical, miraculous, grace-filled, compassionate healing energy. Not Chericlo, I mean Chiron, sorry, trining Chericlo in the money house and the yearning to come home with this asteroid of homecoming and migration. So how could you be coming home to some new level of self-love, self-worth or values around money? I mean, Chiron here has got a lot of money wounding for most Pisces since 2019, but that closes out by 26 completely. With a North Node here over the next year and a half, a lot of money, earnings, worth, self-worth, vocation, calling, earnings, paycheck, salary stuff is healing for a lot of Pisces, right? You're getting ready to change some stories around that. It's really lovely. It's very once in a lifetime Chiron and well, once every 50 to 80 years type of healing going on here. Um, Jupiter squares the lunation in your third house of travel and siblings. And you have Pluto at the last degrees of the house of the elder sibling. A lot of what could go on because of this is some kind of sibling, maybe elder or just sibling in general story. So Pisces look to sibling stories to be in the air in the month of August after this moon. The square from Jupiter could be you, you're feeling bounteous and optimistic about travel and all of a sudden there's a sudden opportunity to travel. It could disrupt an existing travel plan, or you do just have simple opportunity to travel. It's exciting, it's sudden, it's, it's exhilarating. And it connects you to foreigners, foreign lands, foreign shores, work and work opportunities. Last but not least, health. Because Venus is retrograding in your house of sickness, the sun is there. You're asked to find enjoyable ways to improve your vitality during the month of August. Venus says, go back to old ways you used to do. What did you used to do to improve your health, vitality, and radiant wellness? Time to go back and do them again, basically, especially with Hygieia and Chericlo across the way. So maybe you'll go back and do yoga. Maybe you'll go back and do swimming, whatever you did before. Go back and do it again get back into the game of wellness and um, that's about it thank you for listening uh pisces sun moon and rising appreciate you guys being here don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel don't forget i'm promoting in the month of august my lovely aura app i'm an affiliate a brand ambassador whatever you want to call it i do enjoy the app i think it's amazing they have like endless endless opportunities to find what you look want to find there and they they will tailor your desires to what you click that you like you know hypnosis coaching calls um sound baths um <clears throat> AMSR, um, 
they say hypnosis, <laughs> that kind of thing. And uh, you'll never run out of stuff to do on that app. And of course, it's at your disposal. It's on your phone or your device, and you can use it anytime. Thanks for listening. I'll see you guys in my next video. I'm not sure what that'll be. Um, this is being recorded on July the 26th. Patreon community will get it ahead of time, ad-free, early access for five bucks a month, all of my videos. Um, you never ever get ads because I now upload them to Patreon. So if you want to watch me ad-free, you might want to join my Patreon community. Thank you, everyone. Take care.